Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint and here are my top tips and features that I believe every Xbox Series X and S user should know about. So if you've got an Xbox or you know someone who does, hopefully these will help you get the most out of your Xbox in 2024. But before we jump in, did you watch the Xbox Showcase a few days ago? That is definitely one of the best shows we've had in recent years and it's definitely got me hyped for the new games. Okay, so this first one is for those of you that like to play at night or maybe you found the Xbox icon on your controller or the console a little too bright while sitting at your setup. Well, the good news is you can actually adjust the brightness of the Xbox logos on both the console and the controller. So if you head over to settings and then TV and display and then night mode, you'll see an option in here for both the controller and the power button brightness. Then all you need to do is move this slider up or down until you're happy with the brightness of the logos. Or if you'd rather, you could just turn the lights off completely and go for that full on stealth mode. And the same for the Xbox itself. This light on the front can be adjusted or switched off completely if you want to go for that dark mode look. And talking of stealth mode, how many times have you wanted to jump on a quick game at night but this sound prevents you? Well fortunately you can switch off the startup sound and even the dashboard sounds when it boots up. All you need to do is go to settings, accessibility and audio, then change the power chime from on to off. From now on, every time you turn on the Xbox, it will be silent and no one will know that you're gaming. Now, if you've ever found yourself needing to help out a friend, family member or child while they game, it's a pain having to pass that controller back and forth. Well, Xbox do have something called Copilot, which allows you to use two controllers on the same account. This effectively makes the second controller an assist controller, but they appear to be one single controller. So all you need to do is go to settings, accessibility and controller. And then from here, you'll see a Copilot settings. And you just need to turn this on on the controller that you're using. From now on, every time you turn on this second controller, both will have control of the same game and the same home screen. As you can see here, both controllers I'm using are controlling the car at the same time. And I can tell you now, personally, I think this is incredibly useful if you've got children, as you can allow them to play the game and when they need help, well, you can jump on and assist them with that extra controller rather than taking theirs from them. And if you didn't know this already, well the Xbox can be turned on or off and games open just by using your voice. So although the Xbox doesn't actually have a mic built in, if you've got a speaker or a smart home assistant in your room, well you can use that to control it. Firstly, on the Xbox you need to enable this setting under devices and digital assistance. Now you need to set it up on your Google or Alexa app on your phone. And from now on, you can say commands like turn the Xbox on without needing to grab your controller first. Or you could say play hypercharge unboxed on the Xbox and it will jump straight into the game before you even sit down. I mean, it's not going to save you a great deal of time, but it's a cool feature to have. OK, so when you're on your home screen, instead of using the D-pad or thumbsticks to navigate up and down, if you press the RT or the LT buttons, it will move up and down the rows one at a time. It just makes things a little bit quicker for scrolling through lists and tiles. And then if you're on the quick menu, tapping RT will take you down to the bottom where you can access the notifications and the search bar. Now, I have no idea why this is on by default, but you know at the top left of the dashboard, we have our gamer tag and our gamer score. Well, we also have our email address displayed here as well. Honestly, I do not understand why anyone would need to see their email every few seconds. But the good news is, well, we can hide this. This is useful if you want to stream games or capture your dashboard or just share photos of your setup, as there's always a risk that you might accidentally share your email address to others. Well, all you need to do is go into settings, account, sign in and security, and then untick this box here. Now that's it. From now on, your email address will no longer be shown on the home screen. So whether you're using your Xbox with a TV or a monitor, you might want to make sure you're getting the best picture quality from it. Now, by default, this should be set up correctly, but it's always worth checking you're getting the full resolution and frame rate that your TV can support. So if you head over to general and TV and display options, you can check that both 4K and 120Hz options are available. If you're not sure what your TV can handle, hit the 4K details button and it will tell you what you're able to see. So for example, if your TV allows the full 4K and 120Hz, you'll want to enable both of these on the console. But while we're here, if you've never calibrated the HDR for your games, now is the time. This screen will take you through the various images, allow you to tweak it for your brightness and shadows to match the image on the right. And once you've done this, you should get a better HDR image than before, helping with those highlights and shadows in game. Now, if you've ever needed to use your controller on an Xbox and another device, you'll know that you have to press and hold the sync button on the controller and your Xbox to pair them. Well, did you know that once you've paired the controller to two different devices, like an iPad and an Xbox, 
you can quickly swap between the two devices by simply double tapping the pair button on the controller. This will then instantly swap between the two devices that you've synced as it remembers the last Xbox and the last Bluetooth device. And this is incredibly useful if you're gaming on say an Xbox and an iPad at the same time. And it means you don't need to mess around syncing them up again each time you swap as you can jump between them pretty quickly. And when it comes to customizing the Xbox dashboard, there are a few things that you can do. The main one, of course, is the wallpaper. By going to settings and personalization, you can change the background to either a solid color, like here I fancy a nice pink background. But there's also achievement art, customized images and screenshots. But the big one is the dynamic backgrounds, which I think look awesome. There are quite a few in here to choose from, including some new games that we've seen. And when you enable one of these, it will be displayed regardless of the tile or the game that you hover over. So it supersedes any game art that might be on that game. But if for any reason you just want to go back to the normal game art wallpapers, well, all you have to do is click restore defaults and you're back to seeing those wallpapers. Which to be honest, I much prefer anyway, as I like to tab through the games and see the different images that the developers have used. And next up is sound. So in the settings, we've got various sound options for both speakers and headsets, including stereo, uncompressed and DTS. But if you're using a Dolby Atmos setup, you might be interested in the Dolby options as well. Well firstly, if you've got a home theatre that supports Dolby Atmos, you'll notice this is available straight out of the box. But if you've got a compatible headset, you might notice that the Dolby Atmos options doesn't actually work. And that's because you do need a license from Dolby to enable it for the headsets. Now there is a free trial available, but if you want to make the most out of your headset, I would suggest going for the £14 to £15 lifetime access. Because once you've bought it, you will get the option to use Dolby Atmos on your headsets in games that support it. And I can tell you now, this will sound so much better than the other options. Now most of the time you'll probably use a controller with the Xbox Series X or Series S. But did you know that the Xboxes support mouse and keyboard as well? You can literally plug these into the USB port on your Xbox and use them on games as well as accessing the browser. So if you wanted that PC gaming experience but without an actual PC, this is a cool way of doing it. It's also far easier to search or type out messages using a physical keyboard rather than the on-screen options. But just be aware that both of these need to be wired as wireless does not work. Okay, so this next one might seem obvious, but you have got to start preloading your games. Seriously, like any game you know you're going to play at launch, whether it's a paid for or a game pass game, head to the store and pre-install it as soon as you can. This means that come launch day, the game and all of its available updates and downloads are installed and ready to go. And the good thing is you can normally do this weeks before the game even comes out. And that leads me onto the Xbox app. Every Xbox user should have this installed on their phone already, but it's incredible how useful this little app is. It's not just somewhere you can check your profile or update your details, but you can message your mates, jump into parties, or download games straight to your Xbox. For this to work though, on the Xbox you need to make sure you go into settings, devices, and remote features. Then you need to enable remote features in here. This will allow you to install new games and access it from the app. So yeah, if you're not using the Xbox app yet, definitely get this downloaded as it will make your life so much easier while playing and installing games. Okay, now if you're like me and prefer to play your games with no distractions at all, you might need this next one. So on the Xbox, you can control which notifications and pop-ups that you see while you're gaming. And it's always worth having a look through this list and seeing which of these you definitely do not need seeing popping up. It's also useful if you plan on screen recording or capturing your gameplay so these don't pop up and annoy your viewers. Or of course, you can go ahead and disable every single one for that pretty peaceful session. Next up are games. So if you've got an Xbox, my biggest piece of advice is to make sure you have Game Pass. Seriously, the volume of games and new releases that you get each month is well worth the money, especially if you want to play a huge library of games. I've said this before, but you only need to play three to four games a year and it's already paid for itself. Like here are some of the new games that we've seen added recently to Game Pass. But if you're not on Game Pass and you want some free games, well, you can check out the top free games list. So go into the store, choose top free, and then scroll through the list of games. I also always enable the optimized for Series X and S to view the newer games. You can now see the full list, which are all currently free on the Xbox are ready to be downloaded. Some of these of course you will be familiar with like Fortnite and Warzone, but there might be some games in here that you've never even seen. And if you find yourself running out of space with all of these new games and updates, there's a slightly better way you can expand your storage. So these SSDs are already available, but the downside is you'll have a drive hanging out the back of your console and they take up a USB port. Whereas these expansion cards are designed to slot into the back of the Series S and X and take up no physical space at all. Both Seagate and Western Digital make these now, and they both offer the same storage options. And it's just a case of plugging it into the available port on the back and you've immediately doubled or even tripled your storage. And we all know why we need one of these for that one copy of Call of Duty. 
Okay, so those were some of my top tips and favorite features on the Xbox Series X and S. Is there a tip that you would recommend or something that I've missed today? Also, if you do like Xbox content, make sure you subscribe for more videos like this from me. Now, drop a nice Xbox in the comments and I'll give you a thumbs up for staying right till the end. And if you did enjoy today's video, check out my top PS5 tips video next, as it covers 10 tips for 2024. Well, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and follow me everywhere. Until next time.